Hi, this is Guy. You would not believe how many people send me photographs of bugs that they would like me to identify. While I am always happy to do it, the problem is that the photos I get are almost always so out of focus and so small in the camera frame that I cannot possibly make out what they are. So I thought I would take a couple of minutes to explain how to take a good photograph of a bug. Since most people use their smartphones to take photographs, I'm going to focus on how to do it with the phone you already have in your hand. Ooh, that pun was really bad. By the way, don't different smartphones work differently? That's correct. Some smartphones do work differently, so you may need to Google some of this with regard to the phone that you own. I think most phones though work pretty much the same way. To demonstrate how to take a good photo, I would like to introduce you to Fred. One of the problems with being a retired pest controller is that I don't have any pests around to photograph, so I got Fred to help me out. The first thing you need to know is that for me to identify this specimen for you, you need the photo to be quite large in the camera frame. In other words, you need to get close to the subject. Keep in mind though, that if you get too close, then the subject may become blurry. Now your camera doesn't always know what you're taking the photo of, so you need to tell it. With most smartphones, you simply tap on the screen and it will open up a little circle or a little square. If you slide that circle or square over the subject, that is what is going to be in focus. So, open up that little circle or square by tapping on the screen, get as close as you can to the specimen, and then make sure that the specimen is crystal clear in the viewing window. If the photo seems a little blurry, then just back up a little from the subject until the photo clears up. Now, a lot of people send me photos of bugs that they photographed while they were alive. That's ridiculous. Of course they are alive. Dead people can't possibly take photos. You're so silly sometimes. There's something seriously wrong with you. You know that? You see what I'm dealing with here, folks? Anyway, photographing bugs while they are still alive is the worst way you can take photos of a bug. If at all possible, try to collect a live specimen and place it in a jar. Then let it die a natural death. Now that it's dead, it is very easy to lay it on a flat surface and photograph it all you like. This is going to give you the luxury of time. Always take one photograph with the feet facing down and one photograph with the feet facing up. Also, size matters. It is often important for me to know how big the specimen actually is. Therefore, it is always a good idea to place something like a dime next to the specimen for size reference. I don't happen to have a dime right now, so I am going to use a ruler. I recommend that you practice this a bit until you get very good at it. If you send me good quality photos, then most of the time I can identify what sort of pest you are dealing with. Now. I'm not suggesting that everybody run right out and start taking photos of bugs to send to me. Let me tell you, I usually answer more than 50 questions a day, and some of those include photographs. So please do not send a photograph of a specimen that you are able to identify yourself simply by Googling it. Please save the guy's pest solutions big guns for only those pests that you are unable to identify yourself. I'm always happy to do it. 
But when I receive a lot of questions and photos to identify, it slows me down quite a bit and prevents me from getting back quickly to people who have some very serious pest problems and who need immediate answers. So please be respectful of those individuals. Don't get me wrong. It's more than fine to call on me, but only do it if you really need me. Be well, my friends, and thank you so much for watching.